Hi guys, my name is Mons Adler. Um, sorry, I just need to take this call. Okay, Anna. Can I have can I have the slides, up, please? Um, I know you forgot the key, uh, but it's no problem. Um, I can open the door here for you. Wait. Do you think it works? <laughs> you get in. Are you opening the door? It works. Wave to the audience. Wave to the audience. OK, great. See you later. <laughs> Bye. OK, so this is what it's all about. What happens when everything gets connected? Well, what, what can we do? What kinds of analog sensors up and down do we already have installed all over the world? And what new things of sensors can we bring? That is what we're going to talk about today. Um, and with me, I have two other awesome presenters. We call ourselves the Three Bearded Men. It's up to you to decide if it's the three wise men that you're going to see today, but um, at least all of us have the beard. Um, so just some short words of who I am. Five years ago, me and some of my best friends had an idea. What if a camera, which in some terms is viewed as a sensor, could be connected to the internet? What would happen if people had opportunity to have their camera phones connected in real time to the rest of the world? The company was called Bambooser, and we set out on a journey to democratize a technology that earlier only been available for a lucky few, namely the opportunity to broadcast live video from wherever to whomever. Back then, in 2006, we did three major, we did analyze three major trends that we saw. It was me and Jonas Wieg who did, did those analyses of the trends. And the first one was that the cameras or the phone's processing power would grow increasingly during the next year, meaning that it com could compress the video faster and faster. Secondly, we saw that the cell networks were growing rapidly in the terms of bandwidth. How much data per second can they, could you send? And thirdly, and maybe most importantly, people would get flat rate data plans. So for one fee, they could all present everything. So this was 2006, and you have to remember that this was before the iPhone, before Android and, and app stores. This was when Nokia and Symbian ruled the world. And um, as the operator three here in Sweden, they were handing out free data services to your call service, because as they said, no one is using it. That was from the time when we analyzed how Bambooser would work. And hopefully some of those unpredictable things, like iPhones, like app stores, will happen to the three trends that I will talk to you about today. Firstly, maybe you want a slide for that. Um, let's see here. Firstly, we will see a move of human communication from traditional GSM, GPRS networks to 3G networks, and hopefully if Joachim and his company gets us, they want to 4G networks as soon as fast or as soon as possible. But what happens there is that we have this fantastic infrastructure still there, the GSM, GPRS networks. And what actually seems to be is that they fit pretty good what, what, with what the Internet of Things want to do. It can carry small packages of data quite easily. 
And since it's already there and have a great reach, you don't need to put up a, a, a cell tower every 500 meters. It means that it can be used in many scenarios. Also, very importantly, the radio module or the radio circuit, its patent is running out, which means that the price per radio module for a GSM or GPRS will lower itself really quickly during the next couple of years. Secondly, is something that David is going to talk much more about, but it's, it's the era of open source hardware. Not just open source code, but the open source hardware. Presented mostly here in the Arduino platform. This opens up both for rapid prototyping. It's easily and fast. You can do quick, nice, good-looking prototypes. But it, more importantly, it lowers the price for different kinds of application or different kinds of scenarios. So you know the engineering guy at home who want to build a thermometer to his girl's horse because it's about to have a baby foal and mammals actually raise their temperature just before they were about to give birth. He, he's getting you know, his girlfriend's complaints all the time. Is it having birth now? Can we go to the, to the, to the farm and see if it's having a birth? Um, this can send notification by itself. And the same platform can be used, as we saw in Japan this spring, to detect radiation, as several hundred Japanese were putting on geigometers on top of this Arduino platform to see if the radiation was acceptable or not. And they would actually do that maybe because they didn't trust Telco's own analysis. So what they did, they took the data, they put it on the web, and researchers all over the globe could analyze this and say, OK, stay indoors or go outside. Thirdly, is something that we, the more sort of social media people, have been experiencing a lot during the last couple of years, is how do we share this data? Because if we have the, all those sensors, you have them in your phone, which you know of, is you know, GPS, cameras, et cetera, et cetera. We're starting to learn how to share the data from those sensors. And as we get more and more sensors involved, door locks maybe, that open and close to your door, do you want to share that data? Do you want to share that with other people? I think we will learn over time that as those different kinds of data can be beneficial for a sort of greater good, we will accept to share the data. Yes, it's okay for me to share if my door is closed or not, if I don't say that it's at my address. But I can say it's in this region, which might help Malmö City to say that, okay, we have very good statistics that 8.45 every morning in this area, people seem to lock their door for the first time during the day, and maybe we should set in more buses. It's those kinds of services that we'll see up here. And we're seeing this already. There's a company in the region, just based on better weather forecast, can lower the energy consumption of your heating system in your house by 15%. Just by instead of being reactive, as your traditional radiators are today, they can say that, OK, the cold winds are blowing in in Copenhagen, and we know that it shall soon cross Sundet, and therefore maybe we should rise our temperatures in the home to be prepared for the colder wind and not lose energy in that time. So those are some of the major three trends that are going on, and this is happening right now. 